it's Katie here from the Scrappy Sisters and I am back today with another video for Confessions of a Paper Addict and I'm making another little page for my December daily album for 2020 and I have cut out the I think it's called Messy Trees cut file uh, but I haven't cut it all the way out. <laughs> I deleted that sort of outside cut line so that it would cut out as sort of like an insert into my page. I'm using the Coco Vanilla Studio. What's this? This is their most recent collection. Is it called uh, Mary, Mary and Bright? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Mary and Bright. And I used their 6x8 paper pad and I cut out two of the same cut file, but I just flipped it so that they would be exactly the same when I put them together front and back. Does that make sense? So they're opposite to each other and what I'm basically wanting to do is to make a shaker pocket so the way that I made this shaker pocket and which is kind of handy if you're a bit like me and you don't want to pay the big dollars for acetate which I don't because you know it's expensive <laughs> I'm using a page protector now these are the Kayser Craft page protectors which I don't like using in my album because they're not true 12 by 12 size and the pages just kind of flop around in there and I hate it so I only use the Kayser Craft 12 by 12 page protectors when I really really am desperate <laughs> otherwise they kind of get used to hold like cut files that I've cut out that are waiting to be used and things like that um, and I only get the Kayser Craft uh, page protectors when I buy my albums so you get 10 page protectors when you buy the albums that's the only way I get them I don't buy them on their own but this is the first time I've used a page protector as the sort of front of a shaker pocket before this large so I was interested to see how it would work and it's gone great if I don't say so myself so hot tip if you would like to make a shaker pocket and you don't want to spend the money on acetate or you don't have acetate lying around and you don't have packaging because that's the other thing you could use plastic packaging um, I didn't have any that was big enough that wasn't really crinkled already and I wanted the kind of clean look of a page protector so I am adding the page protector to both of the uh, cut apart six by eight pattern papers that I've got there so one's a tree pattern and the other one's a plaid so yeah that's what I've done and then I'm just going to trim it down so that you obviously I cut away the excess and you don't have to be precise with this because you won't see it I just made sure that you couldn't see any of it hanging over the edge and now this is fiddly I'm not going to lie <laughs> it did take me a little bit of time to work out it's also not perfect um, and that is mainly because I didn't put the, the sheet, the sticky mat that you add your paper to through the silhouette. I didn't load it the exact same spot uh, as I did the first time around. And that's because I use the Cricut mats in my silhouette. <laughs> uh, and they're not per a perfect match, obviously, because they're not f made for the silhouette. Uh, and so it is not exact but once you put the um, sequence in you don't notice in my personal opinion so you can see me there trying to see if it's going to line up and I've realized that it's it's not it's not going to line up perfectly uh, but to be honest I've just kind of embraced it <laughs> we're just going to go with it so you can see me there seeing how much kind of you know excess I'm going to have and it's not it's millimeters it just doesn't match by millimeters that's it now I had a roll of foam tape this is from Kayser Craft actually and I just had it in my stash I hadn't used it all and I decided that I would use it on this um, otherwise I only had foam dots or I had foam from the reject shop which I totally would have used but it was orange and I was a little bit worried that you might see it um, kind of in between the layers and so I really wanted to use the white <laughs> so that's what I'm doing I only just had enough left on the roll to do this but that's okay I end up cutting it in half 
as you can see, and then laying it just around the edge. I, I sorry, I did a strip around the very edge of the six by eight paper in general, and then I am just going around the outside edge of the Christmas tree. Now I wanted it to be pretty accurate because if you don't, the sequins can escape out of little holes <laughs> and you won't be able to see them. So I was trying to avoid that and making sure that I you know, didn't have any little spots where a sneaky little sequin could escape from. Um, and I, as I said, I just made it um, with what was left on the roll. And now that's finished and disappeared from my stash. So I'm happy about that. Uh, so how are we going this December? Are you working on a December daily album? Um, do you scrap December? Do you scrap Christmas? Um, I am sort of working on my December daily album. I do do December daily. Uh, what I'm actually doing is recording my stories most days. I'm doing my journaling and making some notes, but I'm not actually having, sorry, I haven't had any time to actually do the pictures or anything like that and actually create pretty things in my album apart from the page that I shared earlier this month and then this page now. Uh, they're the only two that I've done so far and I am working on potentially another little page which you might see later in the month. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to do much but that's okay. Now for what I'm adding into my shaker pocket, I got these, uh, what are they called? Carnival candies from Dress My Craft and they were actually a freebie from scrapbook.com um, when I did my sort of order just before Christmas and I thought what better way to use these. Now they're actually a rubber. I know they don't look like it in, obviously on camera but they are a rubber so I just thought they were cute. I don't know if they're exactly Christmas themed but they work. They're red and white <laughs> and then I use some Spiegel Mum Scraps sequins and these are called White Out. I don't think you can get them anymore. Uh, I've had them in my stash for a while, but I just thought the white would look good. And it does, if I don't say so myself. Um, so, sorry, I'm just looking at what I'm doing. And so, I'm so sorry about the dog. That is my mother-in-law's dog. And she has gone out to go grocery shopping. And my dog, that, her dog, sorry, uh, just barks the whole time that she's gone. <laughs> she lives in our backyard, so... Um, yes, it's very annoying, but that's okay. There's nothing I can do about it. We'll just ignore the dog. <laughs> so you can see me here. I'm pulling off the tape. Now I, I didn't, again, I didn't line this up perfectly, but it was too late to pull it up. I will say with this, uh, foam tape is once it's stuck on, it's really hard to get back up without ripping your paper. So I just had to go with it. But, you know, nothing in my scrapbooking albums is perfect. We know that. I am not a perfect scrapper. So that is kind of the, the base, the base of this. And I was happy with how it was looking, but I realized I didn't know how I was going to attach it to my album. So I knew that I obviously needed to add holes. I didn't want to put it in a page protector. That was an option that I had. I could have put it in a page protector uh, because it was six by eight pattern paper. It would have fit in the page protector, but I didn't. I wanted it to be outside of the page protector and, you know, be able to be kind of shaken up a little bit. Uh, so I basically thought I need to add some form of tab to the outside. So you can see me here using... Um, one of the pages that came in the album that I'm using um, as a template or a guide. I got out my hexagon punch and I punched out some hexagons from, I actually had to cut this Christmas tree uh, three times because the first time it didn't work. <laughs> so I was using the sheet that didn't work the first time to punch out some hexagons and I'm putting them onto my album in the right spot and I will punch holes into them. So I'm creating a tab essentially with the hexagon punch and it works well actually. I think I might do that again. It was um, it was a good idea. <laughs> I could have added an extra strip of pattern paper which I had considered doing. Um, I could have put it in the page protector as I said or I could have just punched holes in it as it was um, and added it to the album as a six by eight size but I wanted it I said I wanted it to be outside of the page protector. I wanted to be able to shake it um, so people could get the kind of shaker feeling. Uh, and yeah, I was, I'm super happy with it. 
So this is actually the next day. <laughs> um, I didn't have time to finish off this page in one sitting. So I have done my little holes and my tabs, but then I decided that I needed to stick the tabs together. I wasn't going to, I was going to leave them separate, but obviously they had a gap between them, uh, the same as the, the foam tape thickness. Um, and I decided they needed to be stuck together. So I did that and then I'm going to use this as a template to punch out the holes. Now I didn't stick the hexagons in exactly the right spot. So the holes are not in the middle of the hexagons, which is a little annoying, but it still works. Um, so I'm punching the holes and then I'm going to do some decorating. Now I don't think I will use this to add a photo, but I could absolutely add a photo if I wanted to. And I may do that. Um, at some point uh, I may use this to document sort of our Christmas tree so I may well add a photo but at this point in time I think it will end up being a filler page um, you'll have to watch to be honest I'm probably not going to finish my December daily album until July next year when we do Christmas in July um, but you know you'll have to just check back in <laughs> to see what I end up doing with this page in terms of if I add a photo or if I leave it as a filler page now, these cute gold puffy stars came in the Mary and Bright collection. They're actually fabric puffy stars. So I just used a glue dot and I'm adding that to the top of the tree like the star. And then I've got out a few of the die cuts from the ephemera pack, um, a couple of Christmas trees, some word strips. And then you can see that I've pulled out some wood veneer up the top right there. That's just from Kaisercraft uh, last year or the year before, can't remember which. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to have a bit of a play. So the word strip says happy holidays. Um, so I'm adding that. And then I decide to add a wood veneer piece as well. And I pull out this very large present. Um, I play around with a few things, but in the end I go back to that large present. And I just grab some wet glue and stick that down. And then because this is a shaker pocket and you can see through the shaker part, <laughs> um, I needed to do some embellishing on the other side as well. Well... Sorry, that's not true. I didn't need to do anything. I wanted to do some embellishing on the other side. And so I kind of mirror that same effect. I do use a smaller die cut tree, but it kind of matches pretty well onto that. And then I do another word strip. Uh, this one says Merry Christmas. And then I fiddle around with a wood veneer piece to add on as well. Um, so again, it's really just mirroring what I did on the front. So I pull out the little Christmas tree wood veneer, I pull out an angel, I pull out the bell, the holly, I didn't know what I was going to use, the present, I kind of try everything and I end up coming back to the little tree, the, the first one that I tried and I tuck that in under the word strip and add that as well and then I do of course add another little fabric star at the top of the tree because why not you can't really see it through the shaker pocket but I add it anyway because every Christmas tree needs a star at the top right and then I'm, I'm done this is finished so make sure you check out all the links in the description box down below I will link to this cut file and also to the Etsy store in general there are 60 cut files that have been released this year plus I'm pretty sure Virginia did a similar amount of Christmas cut files for last year as well so there are a lot of Christmas cut files in the store so definitely go and check it out there is also some free cut files for this month only um, Christmas themed so come and join us on the Facebook group and you will be able to snaffle those free cut files who doesn't love a free cut file let's be honest so all of that will be in the description box down below here's my close-up photo so thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video thanks guys bye